Okay, so let's open the mic for Carol. Oh, Carol just came back from Greece. Your mic is open. Hello. 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 How are you today? I'm well. I'm well. How, how was Greece? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Did you got the fires or you, you escaped before it started? You know, I got, I, I came back before the, those fires started, but, you know, I just want to say that, that the media really does a good job of exaggerating. I mean, for the fires are terrible, but um, this is fire season every year. It's like in California and the West Coast of the U.S., there's fires. Yep. And they're horrible. Um, but they make it sound, I mean, I saw news reports where they were saying, Athens is burning down. And, you know, I, I wasn't in Athens at that moment, but I had six different groups of people traveling and they were like, I texted them and they're like texting me back. Oh, we're at the Acropolis. Here's a picture. It's beautiful. And right. so, so um, yeah. So anyway, it's, uh, I think they have they have a lot of it under control. There's some little fires still going on in various places, but um, but it's not like California because usually in Greece, they burn for a couple of days and then it's done. Yeah, and it's that, also yeah. small small place and easy to contain the fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the news is supposed to sell news, so. I know, but it doesn't help <laughs> me. It doesn't do any good for me selling travel because all of a sudden. I had all these people texting me. Should we cancel our trip? Should we cancel our trip? No way. So, people. Yeah. Oh, people, that's crazy. Yeah. People not afraid of COVID, but, um, but worried about air quality. So yeah. um, anyway, anyway, we're coming up to September and September will be beautiful and I'm going back and, um, but you have me here today. So awesome. nice to see you again. Same, same year, same year. <laughs> And um, anyway, so I have a question for you about WhatsApp. Um, I'm wondering if you know anything about any of the options for, um, you know, I, we, we, we use WhatsApp with, with our clients. We, cre we actually create a WhatsApp group every time for a group of travelers that are like a family that's traveling together. Or, um, mm -hmm. And that way they can connect with our team. So we have all of our team members on it. And then anytime 24 seven, somebody has a question, there's always somebody awake to answer. And um, I'm wondering how to bring that into, into Zoho so that I can have a record of that within the contact, you know, you know, for that contact for the person that we're communicating with. Because there's a lot of good communication going on, but there's no, it's all being stored in WhatsApp. Um, is your WhatsApp business or private? Um, we're using the private one right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, we could probably switch if there was a way to make it work, but it's that, but, but all of us have our WhatsApp connected to our, the phone numbers that we use within Zoho and the email address that we use within Zoho. Mm, there is a way to have a WhatsApp because you're from the US, uh, not all the countries can use WhatsApp business uh, with integrations. It's a limitation that's coming from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, WhatsApp. So there is a way for you to do it. Uh, you will need to have there are multiple services that uh, doing a WhatsApp integration. One of them is the uh, the SMS plugin that I listed a year ago or so on my channel. I can get you the URL again. Okay. So so they're doing it. Eventually, what I would choose is just a service that is the least expensive, of course, and with some good reviews, just to make sure that. No, I'm not wasting time on mediocre service, but I think most of them will give you exactly the same thing, which is just WhatsApp messages in your system. Okay. Yeah. I, Cause the ones I found, like I found one picky something, it was like $65 a month. And no, that's too expensive. I mean, that was, and you had to, you had to like sign up for three, for them. And then, 
And then I found another one that worked as well, but you had to sign up for them and a, and a second service and then integrate all of those. And then it can, and it just seemed like really complicated. And so there so, it is. Yeah, so there is this video, um, SMS, MMS, WhatsApp plugin. It's, I think like $30 a month, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And, and that that's, piggybacking basically on the Twilio integration that's allowing WhatsApp. And we sent Jeremy over, over a thousand clients in the past year that's, uh, that, that is using, they're using the, this plugin. It's very good. It's a very good plugin. Okay. You, you can try it out. If there is something that is less expensive, take, take the less expensive. With, with this specific plugin, the SMS and the MMS is the big thing about it because uh, uh, Jeremy is uh, the developer shows a route instead of selling you his own numbers. And then, you know, you're basically is hostage for life is using your own number. That's what we want. Don't like in, in the future, you can, yeah, of course. And if you don't like him in the future, you can always live and go somewhere else. So this is what I like about this plugin and this is why i connected with jeremy um so yeah that's that's probably where you want to go try, try okay. that or if there is something less expensive just take it i think all of them will do the same thing okay thank okay. you no problem have a beautiful day i will thanks bye, -bye. <laughs> okay Uh, next, uh, we don't have next. No more questions. Only one question. So I will let you give you some time to to drop some uh, questions in the chat, and we'll think about something to educate you for now. Usually we have at that point like fifty questions, so we'll give you time to load it. No questions are coming. Okay, Raven has a question. Your mic is open. Hi, Leo, how are you? Very good, sir, how are you? I am fine, thank you. So my question is, now in Zoho CRM, you would have the contacts and the accounts module, right? Yes. Now, if you have more than one contacts, to that one account, it functions well. So when you go to that account, you could see one contact, two contacts, three contacts under that same account, right? That's right. What about the situation? What about the situation where there's only one account that needs to be attached to multiple accounts, right? Now, by default, Zoho CRM doesn't have this because you can only select one account, right? So what I did in the contacts module, I created a multi lookup field and added all these additional accounts attached to this one contact. However, I don't know the word to say it's not so functional because when, when you go back to the account, you don't see the contact, like how it's this, like how contacts is displayed right now on your screen there. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It just shows the one contact only. So just, just to understand, you're trying to connect multiple accounts to a single contact. C correct, yes. Okay, very good. And Let's try to do what you did, which sounds right, but you're supposed to sit in the accounts. But let's let's try together. So I'm going to my contacts. Let me just go to a different user. Okay, 
So let's create a new multi lookup. And for the ones that don't know what multi lookups means, multi lookup will connect between two different modules. Uh, but you will have a way to add multiple records to an individual contact, basically multiple accounts related to one contact. And this is the field. So let's put it here. We'll just name it accounts and we'll point it to the accounts module. Now, one more thing, uh, you need to give it a name and let's say accounts contacts just so I will know what I'm talking about. And here you will have the allow creating relationship specific modules. If you do not do that, this entire multi lookup is useless because only when you are creating this additional uh, module that will allow you later on to create reports and to do cool stuff about this multi lookup. But without that, it's not going to work. Uh, also, you can do it in the future. So let's say that you created this multi lookup right now and a year later, you're trying to do it. That will still work, but it will start to collect information from this moment on and all the history will not be there. So just so you know, okay. So now the multi lookup is in place. Let's go to our contact. Let's go to one of the contacts. And we have here the accounts. Okay, so let's say I created uh, two of them. ABR in the test family. Let's confirm and save. Okay, so you can see here, those are here. Now, if I go to one of the accounts, this is where you can see, uh, one second, company, yeah. This is where you can see your contacts. You see it? Yeah, I see it. So if I if I then create like a, a work rule for this account module and said, okay, email contact, it will pull the same contact here. I'm not sure I understand. So if I were to create a work rule based on this account, so let's say I have a field saying that this account is I don't know, we need to do a follow-up or something, right? And the work rule is saying, okay, this account has follow-up as selected. Mm -hmm. Send an email to the contact stating, well, we are going to follow up soon. Would it default to this contact? No. The When you're going, for example, and you're creating a workflow rule, that can be related to an individual connected because the system don't know who to send the notification to. What you can do, but that's more advanced, you can create some kind of a function that is doing the magic and just going and sending an email to each one of the related contacts. But that will not work with a, just a regular workflow. That will not work. Okay, I understand. This was really good. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Muhammad. Let me just open your mic. Okay, Muhammad, your mic is open. Hi, Lior, how are you? How are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you for all the good job you are doing for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Uh, actually, we would like to migrate our uh, email from uh, G Suit. To mm -hmm. Okay. And we are not confident about uh, Zoho spam uh, filtering repetition. I okay. saw many, like some users on internet, they're complaining about the false positive. Sometimes they send an email, it goes to the junk mail, or they are receiving legitimate email, it's going to their junk mail. Mm -hmm. So, uh, also, it seems like uh, 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 
of uh, Outlook 365, Microsoft 365. It has a problem with uh, Zoho Mail. It just doesn't accept email from Zoho, something like that. I saw one issue like this, but most of these issues like two or four years old, it's not new. So I would I, like to know your opinion about that. Um, we have our email with Zoho Mail. So our company's email is on Zoho Mail. Uh, as you can understand, I wouldn't choose a bad mail service if it wasn't a reliable one. I cannot tell you that I heard problems with Zoho Mail in the past few years. There was some time about a month ago, there was some, uh, it was very slow. Not sure I can tell you something about spam or anything like that. Uh, one thing that we started to do lately, it's nothing to do with Zoho. Um, some of the clients that we have are high caliber clients, big medical clinics, uh, accounting firms, lawyers, and they need us to protect their information in the best way possible. So we connected our service, our mail service with Checkpoint, which is a security company. And every email that's being sent from Zomail or being received to Zomail is being inspected by Checkpoint. For example, if one of my employees will like to send a list of all my customers or passwords to anyone else or C numbers or driving license, whatever it is, Checkpoint will intercept this attempt, will block it and will notify me. So this is why we're doing the Checkpoint. Spam filter, much, much stronger than any G Suite or Office 365 because it's a security company. When emails being received, Checkpoint will check the email, or uh, I would say the link. If you have links in the, in the email, they will check that the link is a real link pointing to a legit website. Do not include viruses or malware. And this is really why we're doing it. But in terms of email, so mail, I think it's a it's a good good decision to go to, especially if you are on Zo anyway. Yeah, we are. We are on Zo one. Yeah, from from yeah. the Zo mail application, I don't think that I have here because you need to have a real mail. But let's see. No, I don't have it here. From the Zoom mail application, I have one video on my channel that I showed it. You have an interface on the right side that you can, for example, when you're getting a new email, you can click on the widget, let's say Zoom CRM. You can click on a button and this email is being converted into a lead or a contact in your CRM. If you're getting an email that needs to, you need to take some action, you can convert it automatically to a task or a project or a ticket in Zodesk, you have lots of small integrations, except of saving the money, which is $5 per user per month when you're buying an email address from you know, Google or other places, you're also getting those small cool features that's helping a lot when you are interacting with the different Zo applications. Is that, is that making sense? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about if later on we decided to switch back from Zoho to G Suite? Is it easy? I see it's easy to move from G Suite to Zoho, but what about the... Mail other, migration other... is not easy, my friend. Oh. Mail, mail migration suck. How many users do you have? Very few, like 12, something like that, maybe 15. 15. Mm. Um, the migration from the G Suite to Zo is relatively simple. There is in Zo Mail, there is a migration tool that you can feed your master account, which is the, uh, the admin account of your G Suite, and he is able to pull all the addresses 
and also their history, all the emails. And that's supposed to be relatively easy. If that fails, uh, you will be able to migrate individual accounts. Going backwards, probably Google will have a way to do it, but moving emails is not fun. You need to change the MX records on your DNS, SPF, DKIM, some DNS records. Scary. I, if, if you're not confident with moving to Zomel, don't do it. I wouldn't do it. Usually companies like Zo, Google, whatever companies, all of them will try to push you to start using their mail service because they know that once you are on their mail service, you cannot live or you can, but it's too painful. So if you're on the mail service, you're there. You're not moving anywhere. Yeah, so you're right. Just don't make the move unless you're 100% sure that this is what you want to do. Very painful moves. You know, except of moving emails, I'm sure that you have also other duties in the company. And once you start dealing with that, your other duties in the company, you know, you cannot do them anymore because you're too busy with users, questions, a big headache. Yeah, I think we need to choose the, the right time when we don't have like a big project. So if there any issue happens, we can focus on, on the mail issue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank Lord. you, Thanks. my friend. Have a good one. You too. Okay. Mail is uh, is one of those one of those uh, applications that once you do the migration, it's painful. Let's say that uh, Muhammad will have his twelve users, and he likes to try Zoom mail you cannot move only one email to test. You need to move all the 12 users and then test it. This is the problem. One thing that uh, might be helpful, and that's what we did before we decided to go to Zomel, because email will be probably the, the most important communication uh, that you will have with your clients we created a different domain. In our case, it was uh, leorisic.ca or something like that, a domain that we're not really using. And we put some emails there and we started to communicate with close people. And we told them, this is just for test. There is a chance in the future, we'll change the address. And we just saw the interaction, if it works, if the team likes it. And for us, it worked and it was fine. And you're risking really nothing. $12 for a new domain. Not, not a big risk and, and it works fine for us. So that's also something that, that you can do. And if it works, you can move your, your live domain. Uh, we have Mr. Michael. Let me open your mic. Okay, Mr. Michael, your mic is open. Good morning, Leo. How are you? Good, sir. How are you today? Very well. Thank you. Um, so the question is that bottom bar that you have on your screen, um, I'm able to see everybody that visits on the site. I can click on it and chat with them, um, but they don't have any functionality um, in regards to, and I believe it has something to do with sales IQ because sales IQ is the one that tells you when there's people on your site if they're looking to chat with you. You're talking and, about this guy, right? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, they don't have access to that. And we've gone through like every single setting possible. Mm, the only interaction from and to CRM is, that I know of is if you go to settings, you go to Zoho and you have here the sales IQ, one second. Maybe it's all installed. Yeah. So if you go to, let's do it from the beginning. So you go to marketplace, you go to all, 
you go to installed on the top and you will see a visitor tracking. You click on details and here you will have uh, the settings button and you have here the different integration points that you will have with Zoho. Did you try to play with those? No, I didn't. I didn't realize that, that it was there because it is exactly probably this. So I'm going to check it out. And I think that answers it. It's it's hilarious how difficult something is. And you just solve it in 15 seconds. Uh, I, I ate <laughs> buckets of shit uh, before I discovered all those because it's not nothing here is intuitive. You know, right. You should, right? It should yes. be for me going to settings, going to sales IQ. Exactly. Here, click there, right? So this is for me as a user, but uh, again, buckets of shit. That's, that's, <laughs> I still taste it. Yes. Thank you so much for eating it for us. No, no problem, Michael. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Next we have Chantel. Where are you, Chantel? Should tell your mic is open. Uh, hi, Lior. How you doing? Very good. How are you? I'm fine. I didn't have a question. I I just heard the email question, and I just put in the chat that um, you had helped us with our email deliverability issue, which has been going really great for us. So it um, solved so all those problems. It's done. It's done. Yeah. We um we did end up having to do some things on our WordPress, but it you know everything is taken care of. So the WordPress, you had a problem with the SMTP, right? Yes. And that solved also. Yes. And you using and, Oath SMTP for that? Yes, but we're gonna switch to the Zapto Mail because it's expensive for us. <laughs> yeah, Z Zapto Mail is good. Lots of people moving there to to this option. Yes. Yes. So I would do to the person who asked, um, we had a, a issue with our um, emails going to spam. It's, it's been like three years now. And we, what we realized is that it wasn't um, Zoho's issue. It was our issue. And, and Lior helped us, you know, solve that. So um, maybe that's the same issue that he read about. A lot of people don't know how to hook up you know, I guess the transactional mail so that their emails get delivered, you know, so. Yep. Yep. The, there is a solution. It's just digging into the details a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Th thank you very much for the kind words. Thank you, Chantel. And uh, Chantel? Yes. Thank you for the review. Thank you ah, very much. Yes. You're, 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 you're awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we have a Michael Palmer. Let me open your mic. Okay, Michael, your mic is open. Hey, Leo, how are you doing? Very good, sir. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. First time on your live webinar. I usually catch these later. So to be here, I'm, I'm probably, this is probably a bigger question, but it might just be something that you could give us a, an insight in for now. That's we're right. Video studio. We spoke once. We're going to speak many more times in the future. Um, yes. we, we have a group of artists. Let's say we have 20 very highly skilled artists that do work on projects for our clients, right? Okay. And so the projects are video production um, and we have to book an artist on a certain day in a certain room for a certain client. Yep. The nature of our business is that those bookings change all the time. There's always delays in video production. So we have and at the moment... A, just, a, just a second. And the booking is per room, not per user. Um, well, it, it can be actually both. It can be... We, we have a room that can do service A, B, and C, and we have another room that can do service C, D, and E. Not That's all right. of our rooms, because of equipment, can do all of the services. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's a, it's a, the booking is, I've got a service required that needs to be do, done in room one, and the artist doing it is John, mm -hmm. right, um, for client A, B, C. 
Yes. So we, we booked that. And if everything was simple, we'd make that booking, nothing changes. And we'd schedule all of our rooms and all of our artists for each client that we're working on. Yes. Our life's not, our life's not simple. Our clients change the times all the time. So we have a constant moving of requirements from the client that impacts the artist that will work on the project and the room that they will be in. So yep. today we manage this in a FileMaker database with, which has some fuzzy logic to, to avoid clashes. So if I move somebody from room one to room two, I need to make sure that room two is not already booked. Yes. You know, so it's, it's that kind of service. And I, I've looked in CRM and there's a bunch of things around appointments and things like that you can do. And I'm very familiar with that you can write all sorts of scripts to do things. Um, so we're going to be moving to CRM soon. Um, we're looking at creator, maybe the place where we'll find a solution for this scheduling and booking of resources. But if I could leave everything in one place in CRM, I'd prefer to do that. There is no easy solution for you. And I don't think that creator is the solution for you. Uh, what we did with uh, one of our clients, uh, he has almost the same situation like yours. Um, he's a medical clinic with uh, multiple locations. Each location will have multiple rooms. And you can have in each room different type of activities, different type of treatments. And eventually what we created for him is a web interface. So it's a web application that is managing all the appointments and managing the rooms and availability. And using Zo CRM, we created a widget which is one of the features in Zo that we we don't use much, but yeah, uh, I know about that. I I, I plugged in um, Creator. I was messing around in Creator. They have a template in Creator that manages bookings that you know looks like it was built for some kind of I don't know dentist or or something you know like that would be similar to the problem we have. So I managed to get that hooked into CRM. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm familiar with that, but uh, why do you think Creator wouldn't be the solution? Creator is great for forms. I, with again, Zo don't like me talking about it, but from our experience, and maybe other people have different experience. From our experience, most of the projects that are going with Creator are eighty percent done. So the 80% it's very fast. In in a few hours, I'm I'm getting my 80%. The other 20% takes forever and it's expensive. So right. I'm I'm trying just to be efficient with my time and efficient with with what I offer to others, right? Yeah. Uh, going to a custom web application is the last thing that I ever want to go because everything that starts with custom, including Zoho Creator includes lots of pain but if we are there is no solution in zoo crm we tried also calendly and acuity scheduling and lots of different applications for the client it didn't work it didn't provide a good solution therefore we went with a web application web application will be easier and faster to develop than zoo creator it will cost less money eventually the design will be better because you're not limited to side by side form you can do whatever you want whatever it's good for the user interface the bottom line you need to create something that will last for a long time will be easy for the user to use and it needs to give you the functionality that you need otherwise the entire work that you spent is you know worthless is the is the portal that you created the web application you created is that client facing so the clients come on and and look for slots and book time and do things like that? Yes, yes. So it's all, it's all web interface. It's all being done uh, uh, on this widget that we created for the user. And of course, you can have different type of functionality. And this one is still ongoing. It's a project that we started uh, two weeks ago. And right. it, will, it will probably last until the end of September, something like that. 
but it this is what we did uh, with creator we couldn't find a good solution okay thank uh, you I, I think that with calendar just to to end this point with calendar with calendar related I would like to be able to see all the different rooms. I like to see a big map of everything. I like to be able to deselect some rooms. I like to be able to filter. It needs to be visual, not a form based. This is why we didn't like you know, to go with creator for this specific project. Yeah, there's a, there's a solution that's for the video production industry that's used widely um, that, that solves the problem. And they mm -hmm. have an API what I want to do is that it's probably that we'll create estimates for clients around the project inside CRM. And then when the projects have been uh, awarded, meaning the clients accepted the estimate, then we want to start, you know, integrating with the third party, whether that be something we build ourselves or a third party through the API so that we've got all the data, um, you know, in the CRM. And, and just using any outside application just to move things around and, and, and run reports. So um, is the CRM APIs, are they fairly straightforward to hook into another application if they have an, an open API? Very simple to do. The, the simplest that you can go, it's probably Zoflow. One second. So Zoho Flow is an application that you can create a new flow. Very, yeah. very simple to do. Yeah. Okay. And once you create the flow, you will select your webhook on the bottom. Yeah. And the remote application that's sending the traffic will just need to push the traffic to this URL. That's it. Very, very simple to do. Okay, and then you'd configure that, let's say that's the third party application that's pushing data from there to CRM. Can CRM push, it's two way as well, right? So. Yeah, so this is one way. The second way is that you will have in your third party, you will have the same thing. You will have a URL that was supposed to accept new information. Yeah. And you will define it in a webhook. So you create a new webhook. Let's go to an existing one. It will be simpler to, to check. So you can see that you have here the name yeah. and also the URL that you're supposed to shoot the information to. And here you will have the information that you're going to shoot. And those will come from your CRM, from the module. Got it. So it's very simple to configure. It's very simple. So you could send, if you had an estimate in CRM that a customer's approved, um, you could send the client details over to the third party app, you know, so that you don't have yep. to enter those. You could send the date, the start date, the finish date, anything that's on the estimate could be sent over to the third party app. So anything. Went, yeah. And if, if you want to, let's say that you have information that's supposed to bring information from the deal, the contact, the account, and so on. Uh, you have a way or to select here the different modules. And if they are not existing here, you can do it with a custom function. And then you are, you are limitless. You can do whatever you want. So all those options available for you, they are very simple to configure and do it. You know, most functions will take one hour, 30 minutes, two hours maximum. So it's very simple to code on, on Zo. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, Chantel is asking, one second. Uh, where do you get the Zo CRM URL to notify in the web? So let me just open your mic, Chantel, in case that you like to talk. Uh, Whenever you are defining those webhooks, usually the third party will give you the URL. So it's not something that you supposed to have. Let's say that uh, there is a service that uh, uh, it's dropping voicemails, which is very common. If I like to drop a voicemail 
whenever a lead is being created, the company that I registered with, that they are dropping the voicemails, they will give me this line of code or this URL to notify. And I will just need to copy paste it into the specific webhook. So it's not something that you will have unless you will have a third party that gave you this line of code. Yeah, so it looks like in our case, we just have like, you know, two ends that won't hook up because what we're trying to do is bring information from Zoom into the Zoho CRM. So Zoom is asking us for the endpoint URL and Zoho is not giving us that. <laughs> so I guess we can't bring the information in. Yeah, so... The way that we were able to solve it, we went to Zapier. In Zapier, you have Zapier Zoom. You have existing integration between Zapier and Zoom. And you can see the different uh, triggers. So you can see that you can get a notification in Zo when a new meeting is created, when someone is registering to an event, or when a, a create meeting register, I have no idea what it is. But so we were trying to get we're, what we need to know is when a registrant joins a meeting. We saw it on the webinar side, but we just couldn't find it on the meeting side. Point me where to go because I don't know this functionality if it exists even. Where can I see it? Uh, which functionality? Oh, that the one that we're trying to do. Well, we tried to do this in Zapier. That's what I was just saying. And then we tried to do it directly from Zoom. So in Zapier, there's a trigger where you can see when a um, new registrant joins a webinar. But that's not what we need. We need to see when they join a meeting because we use meetings and not webinars. But I don't, I don't see the trigger, so we Me couldn't too. do it through Zapier either. Let's try Zoom uh, integrations. Maybe there is another tool that, that's doing this magic. Man, we, well, we ended up using Integromat, but it's expensive. So Integromat works. So. <laughs> Integromat works yeah, for this purpose. It, they have a function for it. It does. I see. Let's see what they have but for the way Zoom. Integromat works is that they they don't. It doesn't. Um, the function doesn't trigger when the action happens. It's just that they go looking for the um, action every minute and charge you for that. So it, it, it it's a pool. Being a, yes. And it's expensive, you know, to pull every minute. Wonder what are the prices? Uh, yeah. So if it would be per pool, so every operation so costs money. started off, yeah. And you want to have uh, to know yeah. when someone joined yeah. the meeting, probably. So we started off, you know, with the nine dollar plan. Then we had to move up. Yeah, the only alternative would be to cut it on and off, and you know we'd hate to miss that because we forgot to cut it on and off. So it's just but that, pulling. But that's the that that's a cool integration. I I see why you're doing it, and it's it makes absolutely sense. Yeah. yeah, but it can, can be expensive if you have lots of people joining meetings. Yeah, well, it's it's not it's not they don't charge you based on when that action happens. That would be cheaper for us. They just every minute they pull, they run a operation, and that's what you get charged for. Oh, so every minute of the day? Yes. Oh. So right now we have like 40, we're at the 40,000 operation, but we're, it looks like we're going to have to move up to the 150 and that, that should be enough for us. But, you know, I just, you know, it's not, if we could find another way to get that done, I'd rather save that hundred dollars a month. 
Yeah, that's that's expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, because I thought they worked like Zapier, like when the act thing actually happens, but no, it's they're just pulling, you know, constantly looking for that action if it happened, then they'll bring the information back. But it's definitely worth it because what we're pulling in is when they join and also what time they join and what time they leave. So we can really see if somebody stayed the whole time. So then we have different workflows based on that. Yeah, make makes sense. Yeah. Uh, another thing, because it's so much money is involved there, it's like 1200 a year. Um there might be a chance that the developer can use directly the Zo, uh, the Zoom uh, APIs and work with that, but that also will be an expensive journey. I don't think it will go to the 1200, which is what you're supposed to spend in a year. The question is if this functionality is so important, you know? Uh, yeah, it really is for us because our whole business is webinar. I mean, meetings. <laughs> So it is, that's why we paid it. We did look for the direct um, connection. That's the one, like if the webhook is there, it's just, we can't get, you know, Zoom is saying we have to have an endpoint for them to send the information to. And we don't have that URL with Zoho for the CRM. We can, we can, we can create a, a, an incoming url for that probably there is a solution it it will okay. cost it will cost some money because it, it it will take some time but uh, i don't think it will it will be that expensive like you know mm -hmm. going that expensive so if, if it's something that you want to explore we can we can explore it with you definitely okay okay, All okay. Right. thank you thank you Okay, so guys, it's 11. I hope I was able to give you some value today. Have a beautiful rest of your day and see you next week. Bye-bye.